to score 50 and dish out 10 assists. Jackie, do you like seeing this young man respond ever after everything that happened in Cleveland and then just being fined 50 grand for violating COVID protocols earlier this week? Apparently, he can handle anything that it throws his way. You would think that would throw some young players for a loop. The exact opposite happened here with Kevin Porter Jr. I, I, it, it was quite a performance in light of everything that went on. He has certainly been a kid that everyone has felt that the talent is there. Three-level score, right? 47%, 41% in college, even though he didn't play all that much because there were some issues there as well. Right. But this is what people expected. They, maybe not 50 every night, but that he could score frequently. And look, they have an assistant coaching staff there that is known for helping players get back on track. It's a great example of fit and a franchise. All right, Miss Rejections. A couple big time posterizations last night. First oh. up, Cat against former teammate Andrew Wiggins. Nice. Right? And then we have Jeff Green Jeez. on Jakar Sampson. George, which was better? Oh, it's definitely the former teammate. Yeah, like, you I know, think so, first right? of all, Cat doing it to his old teammate. That look look at that. Right yeah. there. He gave him a little nod and everything. Like, you know, you gotta get out of the way, young man. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Cat's taking names this year, isn't he, though? Remember when Jimmy Butler came through? And there were some other guys that Cat's not fooling around. And he, he's taking names, and most of them are ex-teammates. Yeah, well, I hope this carries over into next season. Obviously, this season, not quite what they wanted, although we'll discuss right. a little later in the show what they might be able to do. All right, make abilities. Back to Minnesota. Steph hits a three in the middle of four defenders. Jackie, do they need a fifth defender here? Because apparently this wasn't enough. <laughs> <laughs> is anything enough for Steph Curry in the month of April? What a performance we have seen from him. You know, I thought I had seen everything that Steph Curry could do. I was wrong. He still finds the tiniest little sliver of space and somehow gets that shot off. It's amazing. We clearly amazing. know who was at the top of the scouting report and how that, how that was emphasized by Chris Finch, right? <laughs> Everybody get to Curry, and they all almost did. It's never enough. I got to tell you, it's never enough. Now, we had a debate here whether he was going to hit 100 threes in the month of April. Here he is, the record for single season. He passed. James Harden once he crossed over the 85 mark. We thought maybe he would hit 100, only 96 uh, threes. So, I mean, he's just going to have to go home and live with bummer. himself after that. It's such a shame, right? Such Man, a disappointment. one day maybe. Maybe his brother will lend him four. Exactly. Maybe one day <laughs> Steph will achieve something. Please. All right. Let's turn our attention to the Celtics. Boston currently in the sixth spot out east. They share the same record as the Heat, so that's going to come down to some tie-breaking stuff if they stay neck and neck. Now, over the last 12 games, the Celtics have beaten teams with better records but lost to some of the teams with worst records. Jackie, this is a team that was in the Eastern Conference Finals three of the last four years. Do you feel that experience is going to help them here, or is it kind of inversely given some of their younger players a false sense of security that everything's just going to work out? Honestly, Rachel, if you look back on Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, they got so much so soon, and obviously they had a lot to do with it. Mm -hmm. But they also had a lot of veterans helping them along the way. Guys like Al Horford and Jay Crowder that were doing the little things, and later on that would have been Gordon Hayward as well. And so I do think there was a little bit false sense of, hey, maybe this isn't as hard as it looks. Well, here's the thing. You have to have urgency if you want to win in the NBA, and you have to put it out every single night. There's been, Jason Tatum's had five turnovers in the last 23 games, and he's a great young talent. I'm not saying you shouldn't build around him. I'd build around both these young guys, but look at this pass. You can't do that this late in the year when you know your team is scuffling and that there's issues with this. I've said all along the day Gordon Hayward left, you lost one of your big, strong defensive wings that could help you with the three-point shooting. I'll tell you, last year in the, in the whole NBA, Team shot 33.4% against them, Rachel. That was best in the NBA. Mm. Look where they are now. Wow. Look at their defensive efficiency now. And to me, urgency, that's stuff like turnovers. That's stuff like defensive effort. And it's the less glamorous stuff that gets teams to the Eastern Conference Finals. And let's be honest, the Eastern Conference is much different this year than those previous years that you referenced. It's a lot tougher. So I'm going to disagree with you ever so slightly, Jackie. While I agree with the general premise there, what I would say to you is 
this has been a failure of Danny Ainge in a lot of ways because that depth you talk about is not there anymore, whether mm -hmm. it's Gordon Haywood, whether I it's agree. Jay Crowder, whether it's Al Horford. And you're putting more and more and more of the onus on these two young guys who are performing in big ways, not to say that they don't have nights where they underperform or make mistakes that cost them games. But to me, this is about Danny Ainge, okay? He hasn't replaced this team. This is a team that last year didn't have a ton of depth, and they came back with, I don't know, less depth this particular season. So I'm putting a lot of the blame on Danny Ainge for this particular team's performance. Well, on that note, Jackie, when we saw the amount of money that Gordon Hayward signed with in Charlotte in the offseason, there was a lot right. of that. And Gordon Hayward isn't worth that much. Are you kidding? $120 million? That's crazy. But it's always about what's a player worth to that team. It's not necessarily on the open market, right. right? And to the Hornets, he was worth that. They're not attracting a bunch of free agents. That money has to get spent somewhere, and spending it on Gordon Hayward obviously has really worked out for them with the way their season has gone. Do you think, in hindsight, Jackie, that Danny Ainge should have spent that same amount of money on Gordon Hayward, knowing that that was the competition with Charlotte? I think that's a good question, Rachel, but I will tell you this, that Gordon Hayward was such a good soldier last year. He sacrificed shots, minutes. He was the best facilitator on the team. He did all the dirty work defensively. I think Gordon Hayward was ready for a change of scenery. I think he believes he can be a number one or two on a good team, and that wasn't going to be possible in Boston. So I'm not even sure the money was going to matter at this point. I think Gordon Hayward was just ready to move on, honestly. Interesting. Well, it'll be interesting to see this offseason if Danny tries to adjust some of those holes that we have seen mm -hmm. all over these past right. few months. Jackie, thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you soon. Up next, our Nets reporter, Thanks. Malika Andrews, is going to stop by to explain how first-year coach Steve Nash is managing that revolving door lineup of superstars. Keep it locked to the jump. We'll be right back. The, the rebounding. We, uh, obviously, we're, we have a size disadvantage. Uh, but that doesn't account for the, uh, the 16 offensive boards they had. Uh, I've, I thought at least seven or eight times we didn't box out. Somebody came in from the weak side. We didn't hit them. And uh, they got an extra possession out of it. And when that happens, you, it's almost impossible to win. George, you've seen the Warriors up close several times this year. Do you understand Steve's frustration? Certainly, I understand Steve's frustration for the entire season, to yeah. be honest with you. But in this particular case, I think he's right. And I think that this is part of a byproduct that we're seeing of teams wanting to increase their pace, Rachel, because the details, right, aren't necessarily there because everyone's like, I got to get out to my spot on offense. And it's like, oh, hey, wait, we got to secure the ball first, mm -hmm. right? That plays into this particular situation. I would say this. Look, I covered for a long time those LeBron Wade Bosch teams who were undersized as well not comparing them to this Warriors team but as far as a size is concerned they didn't have as much they don't have very much size just like this team doesn't and they were told hey look you guards you forwards everybody's got to go and rebound and everybody's got to do the little things and I think that with this particular Warriors team or any team that's undersized that needs to be a point of emphasis I've been hoping for three years someone would bring this up because here's the thing about defensive boxing out. If you do it properly, it doesn't matter what size you are. You, the ball goes up, you turn, you make contact with your player, either with your arm or preferably with your rear end, and you take them off the glass. You can be, you can be six foot two and do that to a seven footer if you do it properly. Bam Adebayo is a good uh, example of someone that boxes out. The Lopez brothers are good. You know, some of the bigs are good. Taj Gibson, who's not a huge guy, is a great guy at boxing out. But my goodness, everybody else turns and says, I'm athletic now. I can out jump everybody. Let me grab this ball. Not so much. I'm so glad Steve Kerr said this. This drives me crazy. It really does. Steve is there to answer all of your basketball <laughs> fundamental needs, Jackie. Yes, he is. Absolutely. Certainly this season with Thank the way you. his Warriors are playing. All right, guys, everyone stick with us. We're going to discuss coming up if the Celtics are still playing with the same sense of urgency this